Hello, I'm Maddie Harlem from Permaculture Magazine and I'm at Hawkwood Seed Festival and I am with Rob Hopkins, the co-founder of the Transition Movement. And I wanted to talk to you today really about this missing link in how we solve the problems of the world and specifically climate change. I think you've discovered a little secret that you need to share with the world. Well, I just spent the last couple of years writing a book about imagination. Where I kept reading people like Bill McKibben and Naomi Klein and George Monbiot who kept saying, climate change is a failure of the imagination. And I was really intrigued by that because they would then just move on and start talking about something else. And it felt like there was something really important there in terms of climate change in some ways is the ultimate sort of hideous gruesome conclusion of when Margaret Thatcher said there's no alternative and we're stuck in this position of not being able to imagine anything other than where things are going at the moment but that's driving us off a cliff and it feels like we need to really uh, we need to be able to imagine another world before we can build it and a lot of the research that I've been doing for this book suggests that we're at a time where our imaginations are under a kind of a, an unprecedented perfect storm of things which are causing it to shrink and contract whether that's the fact that we're living in an age of anxiety and loneliness and isolation, the amount of time we spend in front of screens, we spend less and less time in nature, kids grow up really not playing so much in that kind of creative, unstructured sort of a way. Um, the schooling system that we have is really kind of designed to make kids allergic to imagination, I think. Uh, so it feels to me like there's a really important piece of the puzzle, which is that we have to be thinking about how do we make our activism and our projects and, and the world around us really feed and fire the imagination as much as possible. In the workshop this morning this was very much around giving people playful games to get people thinking in different ways in a way that brings to mind a future that we could still create. It could just be... For me, when I did my permaculture course in 1992, it was, looking back on it, the most powerful thing about it was it kind of rewired my imagination. It meant that I came out afterwards and I'm walking down the street and I'm going, yeah, that place there, that could be like that and we could plant those there and that could climb up there and we could do this. I saw the world. I had like, I always talk about my permaculture glasses. You know, you see things through a different lens and that feels like such a precious thing at the moment. So Rob, you've mentioned play, but can you tell us some signposts towards developing this beautiful um, aspect of the brain that increases our imagination so that we can imagine a new world into being? I think the imagination needs a few things. It needs time, it needs space, it needs us not to feel overwhelmed, it needs us to not feel under constant surveillance. Uh, you know, there are certain things it needs our basic needs to be met. So for me, there's something about how do we in our groups and in our projects design in time and space? How do we not replicate the same paradigm that we're trying to replace so that we're part of permaculture groups or whatever projects where we are still kind of working ourselves into the ground and exhausted and stressed and in conflict with each other? How do we create a new culture where we have time and space? You know, and how do we nationally uh, uh, have things like some of the things that I found out in the book are in Mexico City they have a Ministry of Imagination in the Mayor of Mexico's office. In Bologna and Italy they have a Civic Imagination office which plays that role of sitting between the two and I argue we need a we need a National Imagination Act as a way of getting every public body in this country to really think about what can it do to maximize the imaginative capacity of the people who work in it, the people who use it, uh, you know, for me, I think we need. To, uh, I talk in a book about this part of the brain called the hippocampus, which is a part of the brain where the imagination and where our memory fires from. I think we need to be looking at our uh, at permaculture projects that we create as being like a campus for the hippocampus. You know, as, as, as a place where the, the 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 hippocampus and the imagination is invited to expand, where people have space and time to breathe, and there's lots of what if questions, and and where anything feels possible. That's really. For me, it feels like, it, like I said at the beginning of the talk, you know, what if are the two most important words in our language at the moment? And we need our projects to become like love poems to those two words, what if? And really master the art of asking good what if questions. Lovely. Thank you very much, Rob. So, this is Permaculture Media, our YouTube channel. Please sign up, please subscribe. Lots more people, lots more fantastic films, lots more vision. Bye.